is why, in fact, Congressman Raskin believes Donald Trump could spend the rest of his days in prison. There's just deep culpability from the very beginning in everything that Donald Trump did. Um, and uh, I, no, I, I'm very serious about him facing the consequences and, you know, paying for the cost of his actions. It's just that I think that's not the only thing here. And, you know, he could spend the, the remaining days of his misanthropic life behind bars, presumably with Secret Service agents, um, you know, some of whom, <laughs> you know, might might belong with him there. Congressman Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland, joins me now. Congressman, it's uh, it's great to have you on. Um, I, we, we, we mentioned that quote of yours last night of the program, and I, I, it, it made my ears perk up for a bunch of reasons. One of them is that you're, you're, you're careful uh, and you tend not to be hyperbolic. And I know that you were on that subcommittee that considered the criminal referrals. Just tell me why you think actual prosecution, indictment, even conviction are, are genuine and real, tangible possibilities. Well, hundreds of people are getting convicted and going to jail and uh, taking pleas here. Um, and, um, you know, very few of them are more guilty than Donald Trump is of the various offenses that we laid out uh, in terms of deliberate interference with a federal proceeding. That was the entire point of Stop the Steal. It was to uh, mass a huge throng and unleash them against the Capitol in order to stop the steal, i.e. shut down the federal proceeding. He was very clear about that. You got to fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Um, you know, same thing in terms of um, defrauding the government and cheating us out of an honest election and exchanging it for a counterfeit election with fake electors and uh, forcible coercion. You know, same thing with the other charges that we talked about, including uh, insurrection, aiding and abetting insurrection, uh, giving aid and comfort to the insurrectionists. I mean, the evidence is just right there in the heartland of the statute. So um, this is the thing that every member of our committee could converge on. Um, it's just completely clear that he had culpable criminal intent. He knew he had lost the election. Uh, he knew the crowd was armed and dangerous. He said, take down the mags. These were his people. They weren't going to hurt him. He unleashed the crowd to go and fight like hell and said that when fraud is involved, there are very different rules that are allowed and so on. I mean, it's just it's just an open and shut case from my perspective. And I hear from uh, public defenders all the time saying they have had hundreds of clients go to jail on far less evidence than exists against Donald Trump. Yeah, and, and I want to talk about, you know, we, we just put up those the four criminal referrals, and there was this reporting in the lead-up. You were, you were the chair of that subcommittee that was, was sort of deciding through this. There's some back and forth in the reporting about whether that fourth one would be included. It seemed like there was real consensus on the first three. Again, obstruction of official proceeding, which, as you noted, is what lots of people who were trespassing on the Capitol uh, have been have been charged with, people who invaded the, the Capitol. But tell me about incite, incite, assist, or aid and comfort and insurrection, because to me— at an almost kind of level of, of, of history and, and, and morally, that seems the most fitting and the most important, but of course, would also be the hardest to actually prosecute, it seems. Well, it's only the hardest to prosecute, as people say, because it's such an old statute and it hasn't been used because we haven't had a lot of presidents inciting and aiding and assisting That's in an point. insurrection yeah. before. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the, the legal power of an old statute is just that it's a statute. Uh, there's no doctrine which says that statute is too old to be used. Um, so, look, you only have to uh, convict somebody or you only have to make um, a proof that somebody violated one of those three prongs. In Trump's case, he, he violated all three of those prongs. He clearly incited an insurrection and uh, robust bicameral bipartisan majorities of Congress have already determined that he incited insurrection. That already exists as a legislative fact under our constitutional system. He clearly um, assisted them at 2.24 p.m. Uh, when 
He knew that the mob had overrun the House and the Senate, driving us out of our chambers, and they were chanting, hang Mike Pence. And instead of calling off the dogs and trying to uh, involve law enforcement in stopping uh, his mob insurrection, he further inflamed the crowd by saying uh, that Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what needs to be done. He clearly aided the insurrectionary enterprise at that moment. Uh, and, of course, he had been doing it all along, but that's a moment of absolute clarity in these events. And finally, he gave aid and comfort to them um, from that day all the way until today. I mean, he continues to float pardons that he wants to give them on a blanket basis to the people who uh, smashed our officers over the head with Confederate battle flags and Trump flags. He said on that day that they were very special people and he loved them. I mean, it's almost as if it was tailor-made for a statute talking about giving aid and comfort to insurrectionists. It's funny you say that because I was I was thinking about that that phrase aid and comfort, which appears in several statutes, particularly with with treason, you know, aid and comfort to the enemy, and it's got a little bit of a yeah, sort of antiquated ring comfort there. But you know, his statement to the people that day was the literal uh, meaning of comfort. Like he was comforting, he was literally comforting in the video. Like I know you're feeling down. I love you. You're okay. Like you way you would like comfort a toddler who'd fallen and hurt themselves. Well, uh, criminal defendants have historically tried to say, oh, my aid and comfort was just a verbal. I was just soothing and calming and reassuring them. And the courts have said that is rendering aid and comfort. So uh, it doesn't have to be material in the form of sending blankets or what have you. It can be praising them, exalting them and telling them to remember this day forever because they're so special. One of the biggest sort of factual revelations uncovered by your committee uh, in the hearings and then and and then described in the report is about the the plan to march to the Capitol. Again, it was always clear there was some plan there. He says it on the morning of, the, of you know, I'm going to walk down there with you. That never materializes. There was reporting leading up that there had been a dispute among his aides. But one of the things that the clear picture of this, there was a plan to essentially and again, the, the, I think the best historical analog here is Mussolini's march on Rome, right? He marches into Rome with his mob and basically takes the capital with a shot fired. Um, that th th Trump here says, uh, uh, this, this is in, in the report, as January 6th approached, the president again wanted to be there on the ground as his supporters marched on the U.S. Capitol. He floated the idea of having 10,000 National Guardsmen deployed to protect him and his supporters from any supposed threats by left-wing counter-protesters. Now, I mean, what does that say to you? And it's just take a second to conjure that image, should that have happened? Well, there are only two plausible interpretations, Chris. One is that uh, he's an absolute snowflake and, as usual, wanted to send other people in to do his dirty work for him and to take the risk for him. So when he said, and I'm going to be there with you and I'm going to march down there with you, he never meant it, but he wanted to uh, kind of wrap the whole mob protest in some veneer of legitimacy. So they would say, as they did come to say, the president told us to come here. We've got the orders of the U.S. president. And that wasn't a mob that was very big on the separation of powers. So they weren't going to accept some excuse that, well, the legislative branch has the right to maintain the integrity of its own buildings and its own property. Right. So that's one interpretation that he never meant it. The other is he really wanted to go down there and, like Mussolini, uh, be careful carried in uh, on the shoulders of the mob because he thought that the violence was going to go his way. And he was certainly scrutinizing the violence carefully as he watched it from uh, the room off of the Oval Office. He wanted to see which way it was going. On that theory, he really thought he was going to be carried in and um, that either Mike Pence or a substitute replacement that they would install for him would either declare him the president 
for another four years or alternately would kick the whole thing into the House of Representatives for a contingent election under the 12th Amendment, where they knew they had the uh, edge going in because they controlled 27 state delegations, and we, the Democrats, only had 22. Pennsylvania was tied within its delegation 9 to 9. In the 12th Amendment contingent election, the members of the House don't vote on the basis of one member, one vote, but rather one state, one vote, which right. was a constitutional point that Trump was insisting upon. Steve Bannon talked about it. A bunch of them were uh, congregating around that particular premise for the action. Yeah, and, and I will just say for myself, someone who's been pretty immersed in this, though, of course, no one, I think, as much as, as you, that, that I had carried with me theory one, that it was basically he was psyching them up and never was going to go until Cassie Hutchinson's testimony and details in the report that corroborate that he that he really lost it in the in the beast that day because he wanted to go, that he really did have a image, a, 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 a image of himself sort of leading the throng, which I think is, you know, more acutely dangerous than only almost anything you could you could contemplate. I want to I want to ask uh, a, a few more questions about about the report, also about the role that you'll be taking on in this new Congress, if you will be willing to stick with us, Congressman Raskin. Uh, stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 